Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Trinity Sunday at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. And we're actually coming today from St. Thomas Episcopal Church. The ironing board is still safely on the wall in Kathy's workroom. We're glad to have you here with us. Um, we will be having going forward morning prayer from the church. And when there's somebody else in the room following our diocesan guidelines, I will be masked. And so I will be slightly hidden from you except when preaching. Morning prayer begins on page 39. And note that we're making a switch for a few weeks from morning prayer right two to morning prayer right one. Morning prayer right one begins on page 39 in the prayer book, or you can follow along on the link found on the Facebook page where the bulletin is posted. And you can also go there to print it out prior to our time together if you desire to. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God our Heavenly Father to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hand, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. <clears throat> and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the honor and glory of thy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. Let us pray together the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth.
portion of Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 8. Psalm 8. If you're following in the prayer book, Psalm 8. is on page 592, page 592. Let us pray together. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I considered your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels, you adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson, a reading from Genesis. <clears throat> In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. <clears throat> and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruits of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. 
and it was so. God made two, the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Let us pray together a song of praise. Canticle number two in the prayer book for morning prayer. And canticle two is found on page 49 in the prayer book if you're following along there. Page 49, a song of praise. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, 
praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. The second lesson, a reading from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together the song of Zechariah, canticle number four, found on page 50 in the prayer book page 8 in the bulletin. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the Most High. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospels. A reading from Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember... I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Let us pray together, Canticle 7. We praise thee, the Te Deum, which is found on page 52 in the prayer book. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. 
the glorious company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee, the noble army of the martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee the father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, and also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is frequently the preacher's least favorite Sunday of the year to preach on. It's a Sunday notorious in our history for being the Sunday that the poor curate is assigned to preach by the rector. And that's a pity, because as a theologian, this is one of the most glorious Sundays to preach of all. What is it, and why do we do it now? We've been through the cycle of the life and work of Jesus. We have done Advent in anticipating his coming. We have celebrated Christmas in his birth, Epiphany in the manifestation of who the Incarnate One is to us and for us and with us. We have been through the cycle of Lent in which we focused on how we have breached the relationship that the Father establishes with us through the Son and the Spirit. We have celebrated the life risen to new life the resurrection of Christ into which you and I are also raised to the new life of grace. We have celebrated the gift of the Holy Spirit last Sunday in Pentecost. And now we celebrate the church's faithful attempt to summarize all of that in our doctrine of God, to answer the question of who is this one? This one who comes to you and me as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit. What is God trying to do? And what difference does that make for who you and I are? For how you and I live? For what you and I do in this world day by day, precisely in the place where we are, among the people who are there. And we find that the, the doctrine of the Trinity is a doctrine that talks about God the Creator. That's what the Father is. The source of life, the, the, the font of life and creativity. The one out of whom comes not only the world in which we live, but also out of whom indeed comes ourselves. And the Father, as a creative, is ecstatic. That is, God gives God's self to us in love. Now, the technical theological term is grace. Grace is simply and magnificently and extraordinarily God's giving God's self to us in love. And the incarnation is the culmination of God's desire to be in relationship with you and me. Of God's desire to be an active participant in creation. Not just as our 18th century forebearers thought, 
the great clockmaker that put all the pieces together, wound it up and said, hasta luego, have a good time, lots of luck. But that God is here personally. That is, God's self is here in this world. And that culminates in the incarnation in which God not only comes into the world like one of us, God takes into God's self all of the wonder and the glory and the majesty of the world and all of the brokenness and darkness and evil and sin and everything that stands over against God and the image and likeness of God in which you and I are created. And God takes all of that into God's self in Jesus on the cross and God releases us from the power of that. God overcomes the power of that and reveals that God's end for us is not death and destruction, but rather it is precisely as Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I have come that you might have life in its abundance. And to sustain that life, God continues to be present in us as the Holy Spirit. This is one God who speaks God's self to us as creator, as the incarnate one who redeems us, and as the spirit who lives within us in order that we might live into the fullness and the richness and the height and the power and the creativity of human being in the image and likeness of God. This, my brothers and sisters, is good news. It is the way God continues to be with us until the end of the ages. Why is that important? Because actually, ultimately, it is precisely an understanding who God is that you and I are able to understand who we are, what it means to be the image and likeness of God. And we see that there are at least three dimensions to that one God who is with us and the image and likeness at the very core of our being. That you and I are created by God to be creative people. And in that creativity to give ourselves to one another. And what we discover in that process is that we cannot be who we are unless we are giving and receiving from one another who we are. It is not possible to be human without one another. It is essential to be giving of ourself to one another. It is essential that our being with one another and our giving of ourselves to one another be creative, life-giving activity, presence, life, work. And we are to be for each other redemptive in the sense that Jesus models for us how to be for and with one another, to be people of integrity, to be people who know who they are, to be people who are willing to risk being for and with each other personally, who are willing to sacrifice for the good of the whole, who are willing to see that the good of me is dependent on the good of us and without the good of us, there cannot be good for me. To see that it is in us that each of us, each I, has meaning. It is with each other that we come into the fullness of the image and likeness of God. And what Jesus shows us as we become the one body of Christ the church 
is that God's vision of that one body, God's vision of humanity is not monochromatic, it's not singular, it's not grounded in sameness in any kind of way, but it is a oneness that is immensely, infinitely rich and wondrous and holy and a mystery that is black and brown and yellow and red and white, to use sort of the old language of color. It's made up of indigenous people, Hispanic people, Asian people, African American people, Africans, white folks, Europeans. And the most essential thing, the sameness that exists in all of that diversity is the fact that all of us, without exception, are made in the image and likeness of God. At the core of who we are, there is oneness. There's been a lot of sensitivity, shall we say, around how we talk about that these days. And it is out of a very different experience than most of us who are white Anglo-Saxon Protestants have ever experienced. And so we need to listen really, really carefully to what is meant by Black Lives Matter. That is not a statement about other lives don't matter. It is a reminder to all of us that black lives matter, that black lives bear the image and likeness of God, that black lives are beloved sons and daughters of God through Christ and the Spirit. And if that's true, it is also true for Asians and Latinos and white folks and the mixtures thereof. We must never forget that we all are in the image and likeness of God. And the declaration of Black Lives Matter reminds you and me of that fact. And it reminds us that historically, one of the burdens of our brokenness, one of the burdens of our sin, is that we have not always treasured that believed that, acted on that. So what do we do in these days going forward? We take the power of the Spirit to convert our hearts and souls and minds into a greater new vision. And we take the power of that vision to reshape this world in our part of it. You know, I doubt that any of us in Reedsville are going to be able to change Europe or the United States. Who knows? But we probably won't. But what we can do, what we can do and the Spirit empowers us to do, is to see anew that God created us to be the body of Christ. God created each of us in God's own image and likeness so that as we grow as us, as community, the truth and the reality of the God who loves us and redeems us and sustains us becomes clearer and clearer and clearer and that our black brothers and sisters no longer have to remind us that black lives matter because we will have heard and we will have learned and we will have been converted to remember that each of us is a beloved son or daughter of God. And never ever again inflict upon any of God's beloved the pain and the frustration and the brokenness of treating them as if their lives matter less 
than anybody else's life. Black Lives Matter is a proclamation of invitation. It is a proclamation of gospel truth. It is an opening of a possibility, not merely for conceptual understanding, but for practical engagement in conversation, in growing in appreciation, in deepening our love for one another, and translating all of that into actions which proclaim and embody and sustain in the power of the Spirit the truth of all God's beloved called to live together, the truth that the image and likeness of God empowers each of us to bring our blackness, our whiteness, our, our brownness, whatever, is a part of what God gives each of us to bring to the process of creating the new vision, of implementing new ways of being for and with one another as the Father in the Son through the Spirit is for and with us even to the end of the ages. And for that, my brothers and sisters, let us give thanks with all our heart and soul and mind and body this day and always. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now together renew our baptismal vows in which we promise to God and to one another to live the new life of grace into which we are baptized as brothers and sisters made in the image and likeness of God. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, 
loving your neighbor as yourself, I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern thee. Day by day we magnify thee. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Almighty and everlasting God, who has given unto us thy servants grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of thy divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldst keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see thee in thy one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may be, bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee. For the honor of thy name. Amen. A prayer in time of pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factor remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market 
remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for our quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. For joy in God's creation. O Heavenly Father who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. Work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For peace among the nations. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for sound government. O Lord, our governor, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. Lord, keep this nation under your care. To the president and members of the cabinet, to governors of states, mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To senators and representatives, and those who make our laws in states, cities, and towns, give courage, wisdom and foresight to provide for the needs of all your people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Amen. For those who serve in our armed forces, Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Michael, Claire, Daniel, Ben, Brian and Shelley, Forrest, Jonathan, and Hunter. Defend them by day with your heavenly grace, strengthen them in their trials and temptations, Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. We remember with thanksgiving also all who have given their lives in the service of this country. May they rest in peace and rise in glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our diocese. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our bishops, Samuel, our diocesan, and Anne, our suffragan, and other clergy, and all our people. 
Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your Son, and grant that we may show the power of your love in all among whom we live, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unemployed, Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Give the people of this land, guide the people of this land, so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For those who influence public opinion, Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age by many voices. Direct in our time, we pray, those who speak where many listen and write what many read, that they may do their part in making the heart of this people wise, its mind sound, and its will righteous. To the honor of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for social justice. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human being, every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who live alone, Almighty God, whose son had nowhere to lay his head, grant that those who live alone may not be lonely in their solitude, but that following in his steps, they may find fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the poor and the neglected, Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For those who have died in this pandemic and for those who have died because of the brokenness of this world, give rest, O Christ, to thy servants with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth we shall return. For so thou didst ordain when thou createst me, saying, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servants with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. For those on the front lines of service, gracious God, who is always present and active in, through, and around us, be present with those who serve during this pandemic on the front lines for the welfare and benefit of your beloved throughout the world. Doctors, nurses, all medical personnel, first responders, those who work in essential businesses, government workers in local, state, and federal offices, those who exercise leadership in our churches, and all others who put themselves at risk for the welfare, safety, and benefit of your beloved throughout the world each day. Bless them guide them, protect them. 
that in this time of trial they may be sustained with courage and wisdom and compassion in the work they do. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. Among and with all whom I move this day, if I am to stand up, help me stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Together, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, Thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. I bid you a good day. May it be safe, stay healthy. If you would like to stay for coffee hour, uh, you can now click on groups and St. Thomas Cafe, and we will have conversation for a bit after this service. The cafe is open. Take care, stay well. Thank you, sir.